The Enchanted Violin Once Upon a Time There lived in a land far, far away a king with three beautiful daughters. The king had to go on a long journey and asked his daughters what they would like him to bring back for them as a special gift. The oldest daughter, Amelia, said she would like a magnificent sparkling diamond in the shape of a star. The second daughter, Felicia, said she would like to have a long flowing robe woven with golden thread and lined with the finest silk. But the third daughter, Eve said, There's nothing I need, father. Just bring yourself home, safe and sound. But if you absolutely insist, what I really, really want is a magical violin, one that already knows how to play all the beautiful tunes in the world. So, the king along with his knights, his courtiers, his many servants and his cousins and his aunts, set off on a very long journey, where he encountered an intermittent rail service, as well as wild weather, violent storms, driving rain, sea mists, plague and pestilence.
The king searched far and wide, through cities, across the seven seas, and even the seven sisters, up the downs and down the ups, until after many adventures he managed to find a magnificent sparkling diamond in the shape of a star, as well as a long flowing robe woven with golden thread and lined with the finest silk. But he searched in vain for a magical violin until one day a large blind dog crossed his path. To the king's astonishment, the dog spoke. I know what you're looking for, and you will find it nearby. Go down that road, where you will find the musician's house. He has an enchanted violin that has played all the beautiful melodies in the world. But he never plays it any more. For many years ago, a jealous witch cast a terrible spell that turned his daughter into solid ice. Even though a fire burns in their house all day and all night, there she remains, frozen to this day. There is one way you can break the spell. This is what you must do. The hairs on the bow of the enchanted violin will grant three wishes. Take one hair and cast it into the roaring fire. It will make your wish come true. Good luck. And with that, the dog curled up and fell asleep. Thank you.
king followed the dog's instructions, and when he came upon the musician's house, he explained to the musician that he could break the witch's spell. But in return, he would like to have the musician's violin. The old musician told him he had waited long years for someone to break the spell and would give anything in return, even his precious violin. He showed the king up to the top of his house, where it was exactly as the dog had said, the most extraordinary sight you can imagine. Despite a large roaring fire, the room was freezing. Icicles hung from the ceiling, and every surface was covered with a layer of frost. There, in a four-poster bed, lay a young maiden, frozen solid, like an ice sculpture. Remembering the advice given him by the dog, the king carefully removed one hair from the violin bow and threw it into the fire where it hissed and burned. When he turned around, the spell had indeed been broken. from her frozen slumber was the musician's daughter. She gave a cry of delight and ran laughing into her father's arms. The old musician was happy beyond measure and as promised presented the king with the violin. Now the king embarked on the long journey home, avoiding the trains and any replacement bus services up the Downs, along the Seven Sisters, across the Seven Seas, across five continents, through numerous cities, to find his way back home.
When the king returned to his daughters, they rushed out to greet him, and one by one he gave them the presents he had toiled so hard to find. For Amelia, the magnificent sparkling diamond in the shape of a star. For Felicia, the long flowing robe woven with golden thread and lined with silk. And finally, for Eve, he told her the story of the magic bow hairs and gave her the enchanted violin. Delighted with their new presents, the daughters retired to their rooms to enjoy them. That night, whilst everyone was asleep, Eve took out her violin and started to play. Nervously at first, and then gradually becoming more and more confident Gently placing her fingers up and down and stroking the bow across the strings, the violin started to sigh and sing and fill the room with the most beautiful sounds she had ever heard. Carefully putting her violin down, Eve turned around and there, standing before her, was the most handsome prince she had ever seen. Thank you, he said, and sitting down, he told her how long ago a wicked witch had cast a spell that locked him inside the violin. He told her how for many years he had struggled to get out, but the witch had made sure the spell that kept him there could only be broken by one who knew the sound of true love. And now those sounds had magically appeared thanks to her. They talked through the night, and as dawn was breaking, Eve fell asleep and the prince returned captive to the violin. Thereafter, every night, Eve would play her violin and the prince would reappear in her room where they would spend hours together, talking, sharing stories and laughing.
Now, what of the other sisters? Well, Amelia and Felicia had soon become bored with their presence and decided they wanted to go on this enchanted violin and meet an interesting prince too. So it was that one afternoon, whilst Eve was out helping her father, they opened the latch of her door and tiptoed quietly into her room. They began to bicker and quarrel over who should play, both wanting to go first. They grabbed the violin from its case, pulled and tugged and tugged and pulled a bit more. Finally, Amelia, as the eldest and the biggest, got to go first. Yuck! She threw the instrument down in disgust, so Felicia had to go. The two sisters, quickly bored, ran out of the room, leaving the poor violin lying badly out of tune on the floor. When Eve returned and found her violin, she was distraught. She picked it up and tried to tune it, but could not. In tears, she ran out of her room as fast as she could, out of the castle grounds and down to the lake to find solace. There she sat, weeping. 
and as her tears flowed into the water, they created ripples that disturbed a swan nesting by the lake shore. The beautiful creature rose from his nest, never taking his gaze off her for a second, and glided steadily across the water towards her. music inspired Eve and she knew exactly what she had to do next. She leapt up from the lakeside and ran back to the castle and up to her room. There were still two magic hairs left on the bow of the enchanted violin. Carefully she placed one hair into the fire and as it caught a light in the intense heat her violin was magically tuned and she played she played as if her heart would break. As if her very life depended on it. The room filled with beautiful sounds as she poured into her violin all the love she could possibly muster. She played as if every note were a pearl. The music, the most heartfelt poetry, a ravishing array of colours, until exhausted, she collapsed on her bed and fell into a deep, deep sleep.
When she finally awoke and opened her eyes, there he was, smiling down at her, her prince. As there may be children present, we can skip the next bit, but needless to say, it wasn't long before a date was set for the royal wedding, and the pair lived happily ever after, which is what usually happens in fairy stories. sisters. Well, Amelia bought herself an oboe, Felicia a viola, and maybe one day, if they keep practicing, their prince may come for them as well. Thank you. 